Hey, Beer Tubers, Ryan back with another episode of San Diego Beer Vlog, and today I'm going to wrap up Stone IRS Week with the new one. This is the Odd Beers for Odd Years release of the Stone Imperial Russian Stout, and this is the Belgo Anise Imperial Stout from Stone. This is the new one. They're using a Belgian yeast strain with this beer. They're using liberal amounts of anise, and it also says on the bottle, right on the bottom, that they're also aging it on wood, on wood chips. So uh, as you saw in my video earlier in the week, I, I did try this for the first time at the brewery, but you know, you get it on draft, it's cold. Um, and I'm not quite in review mode, but now I'm in review mode, so let's get this poured. I've had this ball sitting out for uh, over an hour now, so I think it's going to be at a good temperature to drink it. Yeah, it recommends serving these heavy beers at 55 degrees. I'd say you can maybe go a little, a little higher on that. Um, let's see the pour on this one. I can already smell it from here. Uh, poured about, oh, two and a half fingers. Um, looks pretty sm similar in terms of mostly small bubbles. Um, head colors that kind of uh, br like lightish brown kind of tan head, dark tan head you'd say. Uh, pitch black uh, like the last one. But w with this one, oh, nice legs on the side of the glass as well. Um, where this is going to differentiate, definitely going to be on the nose as I can already smell. So let's get into that. You know, it's not quite blasting me with the uh, licorice quite yet. Uh, maybe as I swirl around, I pick up a little bit more. I mean, initially diving in um, to this glass, I get those little touch of uh, the warrior hops in there up front, a little like earthy spice note. Might be getting some of that coming through with the Belgian yeast. There's a little more sweetness, and that kind of picks up from the dark fruits kind of on there, that kind of dark berry. But then it also kind of plays into the uh, the black licorice notes of the of the anise in there as well. Um, some breadiness in there as well, and then buried beneath that, you start to pick up the uh, traditional style characteristics, just like subtle subtle chocolate and uh, coffee notes on this one. The uh, the hops and the yeast and the anise kind of come to the forefront. And the malt, for the most part, takes a backseat. So it uh, doesn't smell as big and licorice as I had it on draft, but uh, it should be interesting to try. And I believe this is also 10.5%, yeah, also 10.5% ABV. So let's give it a go. Cheers. Oh, wow, maybe it's just my palate today. It's drinking a lot different than um, at the bistro. Then again, I had two of the regular ones beforehand. Up front, it reminds me a lot of just 2011, you know, standard release of Stone IRS. You get the slight bit of uh, hop bitterness up front. Then comes in the bits of chocolate, followed by some of those dark fruits. Then uh, the coffee notes kind of appear. And then the look, you get some of that uh, black licorice note from the anise. This one seems a touch sweeter in the back end, which is kind of odd because a lot of bells and yeast strains are pretty dry. This one, I mean, it's still fairly dry. You get a little, it, like the finish is longer on this beer. In the back end, you do pick up a hint of those wood chips in there. You get a little bit of the uh, like oak kind of tannins going on. Um, maybe very slight vanilla notes. Uh, as I drink it more, I get more of the anise uh, up front a bit more in the palate. More, more like right before mid-tongue. But it blends really well. For some reason, when I had it on draft my palate that day, I thought the anise was uh, very overpowering. And maybe that was because it was too cold initially. I'm not entirely sure, but I've had this bottle out. I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be between 55 and 60 degrees. Yeah, the anise is not 
um, overpowering at all, which was kind of what I'm afraid of. I'm not a huge fan of, of black licorice and all those liqueurs that use it as well, but this is blending really nicely. As I drink it a little more, um, it tends to linger a little bit more on the palate. The finish, I, I get some like spiciness. I get some um, that black an the anise in there, black licorice flavor, uh, and some of that roasted coffeeness, coffee character. Um, I'm not quite getting that smokiness on the finish, but I also getting like a touch of um, maybe like a banana note. So that I think that that's the Belgian yeast in there because it kind of has this odd kind of fruity ester, but it's not quite the dark fruit I was getting in the previous one. It's just like a little like sweeter kind of fruit note. And I think that it kind of goes banana-y, which kind of lends to the Belgian yeast strain, which is for the most part fairly subtle in this beer for the most part compared to the Belgo Guardian where that was very prominent, the yeast strain in that beer. This one is much more subdued. Oh yeah, the other note that I get is it almost goes because of that black anise, the, the roasted malts, the dark malts, it almost goes, it has a little bit of like a root beer flavor to it. Um, that you kind of get maybe kind of midway, um, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it, this is, it's definitely a different beer than the regular Stone IRS. Um, seems slightly more bitter, and I think maybe that's a combination of all the, the hops, the yeast strain. Um, might be producing some spice notes to kind of play into that and then maybe some of the anise once again kind of coming through so um, really a unique take on this beer I have to admit had they not brewed the standard release I, I might have been a little disappointed um, because I, I just love it so much it's one of my favorite beers that's why I gave it an A+. Uh, for this particular beer um, I'm somewhere between an A- minus and an A I think it still has all the awesome aspects of the, the standard Stone IRS and just adds in some an interesting twist to it. Um, I don't like it as much as the regular, but it's still really interesting in, uh, in some of the flavors you can kind of pull out of it. It definitely drinks differently. So uh, actually, I think I'll, I'll go uh, A- minus on this one. Uh, it's still an excellent beer. Highly recommend you pick one up. Uh, I'm going to be really curious to see how this ages because I mean, it's the first time they've done this. And, and what I hope they do with this beer, the Stone IRS, for every odd year, hopefully they change up the recipe. It would be nice to see if like this year's the Belgian Anise, maybe next time they do it in 2013, you know, take the Stone IRS, do, do like cocoa nibs or vanilla beans or... or um, you know, some peppers, maybe like Chipotle version or, you know, something something different just to change it up every odd years would be really cool to see from Stone instead of just Belga Anis every odd year. So hopefully they do do that. We'll see. Uh, it's going to wrap up for this review. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, please rate and comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And another shot at the bottle of the Belga Anis Pure Russian Stout from Stone. So uh, see you in another beer review or home brew video. Cheers.